This has to be one of the strangest things that I've ever found on the beach after a storm. It is a gulf fireworm, a member of the bristleworm family. If you happen to touch one, you'll know exactly why it's called a fireworm. Do you see those bristles along its side and under its body? These bristles are their defense mechanism. They are venomous and are capable of delivering a very painful sting. They break off in your skin and release a toxin. The pain and itching can last for days. When fireworms feel threatened, they will roll into a ball and expose these venomous bristles. This species is also known as the common fireworm and the iridescent fireworm. They feed on algae, carrion, coral polyps, and decaying plants and animals. If you see one on the beach, be careful. Sometimes you can search for days and never see a sand dollar. And then other times they're everywhere. If you're lucky, you can see the trail they make when they're traveling across the sand. Remember, if you find them and they're covered with a skin of velvet textured spines, they are alive and cannot be taken from the beach. When they are dead and the skin is absent, they are white. Atlantic sea cucumbers are not edible. These little animals grow to be about a foot long and are related to sea stars and sea urchins. Like those creatures, they don't have a backbone, a heart, eyes, or a brain. Sea cucumbers don't have arms either, but they do have tube feet. They use these tube feet for walking or for anchoring to the sea bottom. They use the retractable tentacles around their mouth to sweep through the mud or to grab plankton to eat. Horseshoe crabs have existed nearly unchanged for the last 445 million years, and they're nearly identical to their ancient relatives. They're not crabs, and they're more closely related to spiders than anything else. There are four species of horseshoe crabs still around today. Only one species is found in North America. The other three species are found in Southeast Asia. This large hermit crab caught my eye because of its size, but I was really puzzled when I saw this other one scurrying across the tide pool floor. I simply couldn't figure out what kind of a shell he was using for his home. A closer look gave me the answer. It was a lightning whelk, and it was almost covered with other living creatures. There were two sea anemones, barnacles, a slipper shell, and what appears to be a gulf oyster drill and a rib cantharis. This curious collection turned into a thing of beauty when the sea anemone opened. It is as beautiful as the flower it's named for. There is something magical about seeing a live sea star. Most sea stars glide along the tidal pool floor on tube feet. It is hard to see the individual tube feet under this sea star's arm, but it shows how smoothly the animal moves. The action of these tube feet can be seen better here. Tube feet are arranged in grooves along the arms. They operate through hydraulic pressure. They're also used to pass food to the oral mouth at the center of the body and to attach the sea star to surfaces. This interesting little sea star is called a brittle star or a serpent star. It doesn't glide on tube feet like the other sea stars. Instead, it lifts its legs, moves them forward, and then places them down again. If I gently place it on my hand, we can get a better look at how agile it is. When I put it back into the water, it will continue on its journey. Did you know that if one or more arms and a portion of the central body break off, both pieces of the brittle star will grow new bodies and arms to form two animals. If you've walked on a sandbar or a mud flat during a low tide, more than likely you've seen these squiggly piles and maybe wondered what made them. Well, we call them castings, but simply put, they're the poo of lugworms. 
Lugworms live in a U-shaped burrow in the sand. Often you will see a hole or an indentation in the sand off to the side of the casting. That is their feeding pit. It eats sediment from the front of its burrow and expels a cast from its tail. You have probably seen hundreds of these U-shaped things on the beach after a storm. They are parchment worm casings. The worm lives in this parchment-like U-shaped tube. The tube is under the sand with both ends exposed to the water. The worm feeds by pumping water through its tube, trapping plankton and other suspended organic matter on a net of mucus. This worm has a unique way of protecting itself from predators. If the tube opening is disturbed, the worm releases a blue luminous cloud of mucus and then it retreats to the opposite end of the tube. These strange looking blobs are known as sea pork. The name refers to various species of tunicates that have been siphoning, filtering, and squirting water for hundreds of millions of years. They are composed of colonies of organisms called zoids. They live nestled together in a protective sheath. They are found in various colors. Newcomers to the beach often think that the black ones are globs of oil from an oil spill. The name is said to come from the fact that dead tunicates sometimes resemble slabs of glistening fat. Marine worms create gelatinous bubbles and blobs that hold their eggs. One day I stumbled upon a worm creating one. At first the gelatinous bubble was relatively small, then little by little it enlarged. When it was an adequate size, the worm inhaled the fluid, and when it exhaled, eggs were pushed into the gelatinous mass. This breathing-like action continued until the fluid was filled with eggs.